Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, so excited to come and share with you on today, on this Tuesday, June the 14th, 2022. And, uh, we're still into uh, sharing with you things for uh, your vision and your business, helping you along the way. And I want to share something with you that uh, I think will assist all of us when it comes to our vision, when it comes to purpose, your dreams, and your goals. Many of you know that a few years ago, we uh, began to work and utilize a formula uh, as we call the three C's. The three C's are commitment, consistency, and completion. And uh, we have added to this formula so excited and we're sharing it with you here today and we're going to share more uh, within our July issue of Hope and Truth magazine and be sure to look out for details on a upcoming seminar in which we will cover both the three C's the formula of the three C's which are commitment consistency and completion and we're going to introduce part two of that part two is the three p's the three p's are planning for preparation for presentation so that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to share components of the three p's with you on today and you know that we line everything up with scripture. And so I'm so excited about part two of the formula for your development. And this is to help with your goals and your dreams. This is to help with the vision that you have been given. All right, so when we're talking about the three P's, we're talking about planning. We're also talking about preparation. And we're going to talk about presentation. That is the three P's, part two of the development for your vision. Now, I was led... And I want to take my time with this. We're going to cover more on this tomorrow, so uh, no need to worry. We're going to spend some time with this topic, okay? Now, when I was led to look at this, I was first led to take a look at certain scripture texts. And the first scripture text I was led to take a look at was dealing with David. David in his young age as a shepherd boy. So I want to take a look over at, uh, let's take a look at 1 Samuel. We're going to take a look at 1 Samuel. And all of these things begin to line up with planning preparation and presentation now David was a young shepherd boy and he tended to his father's sheep and it came upon the opportunity where David went to the battle and this is a battle with Saul and the children of Israel and with Goliath Over in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, the 34th verse, and you can read to the 51st. But here, I'm going to, let me back up to the 
33rd verse. It says, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant, kept thy father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and i went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me i caught him by his beard and smote him in the and and he smote and he slew him verse 33 says thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing he have defiled the armies of the living God now I know that normally when we talk about David during this time we talk about uh, how he was able to fight in the battle how he was a warrior I want to look at the part of planning to prepare for presentation the time that he was in the wilderness and I say wilderness that's a time of his youth tending to his father's sheep and he was already gifted with how to war and he had to get his own tools and use them in war now during the time of planning and getting prepared for presentation and I'm going to line this up stay with me he had to plan so can you imagine he had to uh, he was given different scenarios of how to protect the sheep so he had to plan out what he was going to do I can also imagine David uh, going through the process of getting prepared, learning how to utilize the tools that he had to defend the sheep. And so he planned what he would do. And he took those plans and he went through a process of getting prepared to defend. If anything came up against to attack what he was sent to guard. Now, through that planning and being prepared, there was going to be a time that he would have an opportunity to present. Scripture also tells us over in Proverbs, the 18th chapter in the 16th verse, a man's gifts maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So while I was looking at this and I was writing for Hope and Truth magazine for our July issue, this fell to my spirit. And I saw the shape of the three Ps. It wasn't until after I began to write that all of these things begin to fall into place for me. And so I said, wait a minute, this right here is really part two of the formula of the three C's. Now, the formula of the three C's, we developed that, I want to say, back in 2018 or 19. And we have worked it, we have taught it, we have shared it. It's how we do what we do. Now, we did not start doing and operating in the three C's after it was written. It was something that we were already, already had adopted. It was just given a name and a formula. And so I'm going to say the same thing about part two, planning for preparation for the presentation. It's something that we already work in and operate in. It's just now that we are at a point that we want to release and share that level of teaching and development with our listening audience. We do offer it in our leadership courses. And uh, so uh, here via the Wisdom app, as well as here on our radio broadcast, we definitely want to share components of this with you.
So if you are one and you have not had a chance to get a copy of the formula for the three C's, you can definitely get a copy. All you have to do is email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com and we will email you a copy of the formula for the three C's. The formula for the three P's, we will release that in full detail during our conference, but I just want to share some outline components with you today. Now, David planned, David prepared, and at an appointed time, what he planned for and what he prepared for was able to bring him before great men. And so you say, what great men? Well, Remember, David showed up at the battle. And all of the people, including King Saul, was scared of Goliath, the warrior for the Philistines. And nobody wanted to go out against him. He talked about them. He challenged them. He challenged their God. And they all stood on the other side of the field and they trembled with fear. But someone who was created for this appointed time, he planned well, he prepared very well, and there was an opportunity for presentation. Now, did David know that one day he was going to come in front of Goliath? No. But he planned to defend what he was called to shepherd. And I say to you, for your purpose, your goals, and your dreams, you have a vision. And before you can execute and share that vision, first of all, we must get an understanding of the vision. And it goes beyond what we think or what we can imagine that the, fis- that the vision should be. And so Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 and 1, this is one of my favorite passages of scripture, so I I use it quite a bit because it really, really means a lot to me. It it brings me uh, to a place of reality. Habakkuk 2 and 1 says, I will stand upon my watch at the tower and I will wait to see what he will say to me. And when I am reproved meaning when I am corrected. So when I have some clarity of what the vision is, because we can see a beautiful picture, but not really understand the components to get to what we see. And so I must understand what the vision is all about, the purpose and and, and the components that make up the vision. And once I get an understanding of the vision, then I can start to plan for what I see. Oftentimes you will hear me say, when you see the vision, then ask, how do you get to what you see? A part of asking to get to what you see is planning because you have to plan to get there. And as you are planning for different components of the vision, then you have to prepare for what you see as well. So check out the scenery, check out out all of the components in the scenery and, and then plan, meaning gather the tools so that when you sit down, you can prepare, you can begin to put those things together for the presentation. And so here's an opportunity that David was brought before great men. Goliath was the chief warrior of the Philistines. He was also brought before King Saul. This is the first king of Israel after their exile. All the other mighty men of valor his brothers and 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 so this is an opportunity 
for what he had prepared for. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning into the Balance of Life. I'm Pastor Angel, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Do not forget that you can receive free copies of our magazine. You can get a digital copy emailed to you. All you have to do is email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com, and we will send you over our recent issue of Hope and Truth magazine, which is our June issue, free of no charge. Or you can visit our website at www.angelferguson-ministries.com. Go over to the Hope and Truth tab and you can look at the magazine there as well. So we're talking about the formula for your development. And this is our part two. The first part developed back in, oh, 2018. And now here we are in 2022 and, and we are uh, at a point where we are sharing more to how we work. We had to learn through trial and error to be committed, to be consistent, and to complete task. That's how uh, the beauty of the vision is made manifest. We have to be committed to it and we have to be consistent and then we can move forward to completion. I can't complete something that I'm not committed to. And if I do not follow principles of being consistent, then I'm not committed. So do you see how those things intertwine and they are one? Part two of what we're sharing with you now, years later, and this is how we work. We plan to prepare for the presentation. I do not believe in uh, presenting anything without having proper planning and presentation. Although I might uh, receive a request to do something at last minute, I still go through the process of planning to prepare because my presentation must be effective. I have a rule that whenever you are in my presence, visually or audibly, you should leave with tools, tools that will help you get to the next level. All right. So let's look at another example of planning for the preparation for the presentation. Let's look at another example. This example is also going to be about David. Okay, so let's take a look over in, I want to now go to uh, let's take a look at First Chronicles. First Chronicles, and I want to look at the 17th chapter. All right. In the 17th chapter of First Chronicles, here David has a notion in his heart, a desire in his heart to do something for the Lord. He wants to build a house. He wants to build a sanctuary. I believe that this desire came from God. I really do. And the reason why I say that is because further in the 17th chapter, God tells him that he will do this through his seed, through his son. And he goes on to say that he will be a father to him and, and how the son will be a son unto him and, and he will not take his mercy away from him and the things that he will establish through the son. And David was grateful. One thing David did after he was corrected. So you see how we line that up with Habakkuk 2 and 1? I just love the flow of teaching 
and bringing things uh, line by line, precept by precept. So David had, had a vision and he thought it should be done one way. But he was corrected and reproved. Well, that's what Habakkuk 2 and 1 says. Once he was corrected, reproved, he allowed the Holy Spirit to lead and guide him to plan, to prepare, and then one day he would present the plans for this house to his son. So do you catch that? Planning for preparation for the presentation. Some planning had to go into it. He could see the house. He had a vision. If we were to read and study through all of this, it begins in First Chronicles 17 and then it picks up again Going over into the 22nd chapter of First Chronicles. How the detail that David put into planning. Every portion, dimensions and all of these things he put into planning. And when I get over to first chronicles 28 and 19 it says all this said david the lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern and so he 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 allowed the holy spirit he allowed god to give him the plans for the desire that was in his heart and he took it a step further. Once he got the plans, then he began to prepare, meaning he began to gather what was needed so that he could one day present it to his son who would carry on the vision. So in your process of whatever it is that you are about to do, there is a process. There is a formula that you probably are already operating in, but I want you to identify your formula. We are just sharing with you our formula, and I pray that it helps you. It has helped us through the years. It allows us to grow, and it allows us to uh, present well. It allows us to complete projects. It has aligned us in a place to be consistent with what we do. Anything pertaining to the kingdom of heaven, anything that you want to make a good impact with must have a formula. It, you must be committed to it. And if you don't understand it, then you won't be committed. And if you are really committed, then you must develop tools of being consistent. If you set a time that you're going to work on something, be consistent. Develop consistency. Add it to your desire of commitment. And then work towards completion. Complete one thing at a time. When we complete one component at a time, it adds to the bigger picture. Oftentimes we want to uh, we want to go after the bigger picture and there's no foundation up under it. And we get frustrated along the way without realizing that uh, we have to start small, despise not the day of small beginnings. So you do one thing at a time, be committed, learn to be consistent, then move to completion, one section at a time. That's how we get to the full manifestation of the vision. Plan well. 
if you have a big project what is it going to take to complete that project the majority of the time the biggest component is going to be your time and your attention which is your commitment and when you set aside time to work on it be consistent And as you move forward, you're going to see that you complete this, you complete that. The components, I always go back to the puzzle, the components of the puzzle are complete. So when you get ready to present, it has a wonderful impact. So do you see the example? And this is, this is mentoring, this is coaching, and I line it all up with scripture texts. That is the way I work. I'm bringing some practicality to your life. It's not hard. I'm not making it complicated. I'm not, uh, it's not a mystery. I'm breaking it down in such a manner that you can understand so that you can reach the goal that you need and desire to reach. So that's two examples of planning for preparation for completion. He planned, he prepared, so he, 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 he wrote out what uh, the dimensions and what would go in each room and he wrote out all of those things and then he began to prepare for for what he saw if you ever see yourself standing at a podium to give a speech no matter the genre ministry lectures um, motivational speaker uh, entrepreneur programs head manager whatever it may be plan to prepare for your presentation what is it that you want to say how do you want to say it what points do you want to get across to them what is the purpose all of that is in your planning and then you prepare to present simple formula but in order to make the formula work in order for the formula to work you must be committed consistent so that you can complete it's going to take your dedication If you want a high return on your profit, which is what you put into what you do, it's going to take development of a formula. Develop your own formula. How is it that you work? Are you satisfied with where you are? Do you need to critique? If you don't have a, a, a formula or a pattern, it is clearly demonstrated that what the world does is what was adapted from the Word of God. I absolutely love this. So, another area that I want to share with you is after David planned, prepared, and presented to his son, then Solomon went into planning, preparing, and presentation as well. Now, what is so wonderful about this is that David presented to his son. At the time that Solomon was to present, he presented back to God, from which 
it originally came from. When it was Solomon's turn, Solomon received the plans. He began to put things in motion to start to build. And so there were some resources already put in place. He had to contact those resources to say, now is the time. He also did some preparation by making some bargains and uh, with work for grain and food. So that the work could begin. And at an appointed time when all of that was done, he presented. We should take on the same principle. This is Leadership 101. This is Coaching 101. This is Vision 101. If we are ever really going to do anything in our lives, there is a process. There is a formula. And I'm not sharing anything with you that I don't do. Because I do this seven days a week. No matter what it is that I am called to do, it could be to, uh, prime example, just last week we had um, uh, some services here in New Jersey and I was asked to do a few of the meals to cook and prepare. So um, I'm a planner. I am a planner. I like to plan. So uh, I, there were details that I asked. What is your menu? What time do you want to serve? How many people are you serving? I have to have all of those things. I have to have all of those details so that I can prepare. I need to prepare my time because I have certain things set. I have a schedule, so I had to prepare myself. And then I like to, uh, if I'm preparing correctly, I can deliver on time. See, it all lines up. When you plan to prepare for your presentation, you will deliver on time and you will get the impact that you are expecting. But when you don't plan well, when you rush through, you're not prepared to present. And it shows. If you don't take your time to, to plan for what you want to present, it's going to look thrown together. It's going to look uh, half done. It, your, your, your message that you want to convey, it will not go over well. It will not not only will they not receive it, but they won't understand it. So it takes all of these things. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And another thing that I, 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 I dread. This came to me, I want to say over a year ago. And it's so very true. When you're in the planning and preparation process, you don't do that in public. And so a very, very good and vital question was presented to me. And so I'm going to give it to you as you are developing and you are growing in areas of your life for your ministry, for your business. Do you get dressed in public? Ask yourself that. Do I get dressed in public? That applies to your presentation. When you are at the point of your presentation, you don't get dressed. You, you're not still putting stuff together and, and doing checks and balances at your presentation. All of that should have been done. That's just like getting dressed in public. And we don't get dressed in public. We get dressed in private. We know where we're going. We know what the occasion is. The invitation indicates what the occasion is. And so we plan to attend. And we prepare to present ourselves. And so if I know the dynamics, 
if I know the significance of the invitation, then I'm going to plan to prepare to present myself. I don't get to uh, the date. I don't get to the occasion and then decide, oh, this is what I'm going to wear and get dressed in public. No. So as you are preparing for your next, and this is, I, I had my previous pastor, still admire him very, very much. Uh, his name is Pastor Calvin Green over in Tampa, Florida of True Life Community Worship Center. He would always say, next level teaching. This is next level teaching. And guess what? You're getting this portion for free. Take a look over where you desire to be. What it is that you have in place. What is it that you have in place? What is your structure? How are you planning? What is it that you want to convey? Prepare for it. Let's go back to David and his youth. Once again, David had no idea that one day he would go from protecting sheep with his smooth stones and his slingshot to using those same tools that he had prepared, that he had perfected. He had a method. That's all the formula is. Development of a method that works for you. Now this method works for us and we fine-tune it. We are reminded of it. It is forever for us. Before me, I rely on it. Whenever I try to get out of line, and I'm going, I'm, I'm being transparent with you right now. Whenever I get out of line with the way I know things should go, listen, I check myself. Wait a minute, stop. What are you doing? That's not the way we work. That's not the way we flow. And you know what? Let me say this. I do not allow others to pull me out of the way I work. I do not. I work well with people, but I have a certain level in which I like to work. I'm a, 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 a Nehemiah to say I'm on a good work and I can't come down. I only want to come up. I only want to raise the bar. And so do I come across people who uh, they don't they don't plan anything. And so they're not prepared. They just want to present. Here's something else that I learned. When we move like that, when we don't prepare, when we don't plan, when we don't prepare, we still have the expectation of wanting the best. And that just doesn't add up. You didn't prepare for the best. You didn't plan for the best. So how do you have an expectation of wanting the best? You didn't go and give 100%. That's not leadership. And so think about what you want the outcome to be. Also keep this in mind. You will often hear me say as you follow the balance of life, as you follow me in other areas, Hope and Truth Magazine and um, the School of Ministry and Mentoring, you will often hear me say, plan to present to one as you would a thousand. The way you plan, the way you prepare, and the way you present has nothing to do with the numbers. Mm -mm. Nope. It's what you want to deliver that matters.
So when you are planning to prepare, I don't want you to think about how many is going to be present. I want you to think about the message that you want to convey. I want you to think about the impact of the delivery that you are given that they are to receive. What are they walking away with when they leave your presence? Whether you have a podcast, whether you are there in person or you are doing virtual networking, what are they leaving with when they leave your presence? That is what matters. If there's just one person there or tens of thousands, The bottom line is that they receive what they were supposed to receive from you. Did you give them what they came to get? Oftentimes, and I've heard great people say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not expecting a lot of people, so I'm not going to give as much And that is the wrong idea. Why cheat the ones that showed up? Don't cheat them. Don't cheat yourself. Because if that one person shows up and they didn't get what they were supposed to get and they can pick up that you didn't plan well, you didn't prepare well and the presentation was uh, just mediocre, that one person can spread that quicker than a thousand people can. So we're in a time of really needing to be developed. Be sure of your calling. You, your purpose, your goals, your dreams, your vision should be one. Body, mind, and soul. No one can represent what's within you. No one can represent the the business name, the structure, the vision better than you. So plan to prepare to present and do it well. Take some time, step back, get into the groomer's chair, groom, cultivate, develop what it is that you have. So at the appointed time, when your great gifts, when your gifts will bring you before great men, There will be evidence that you took your time. You thought about this thing. You let it develop. You cultivated it. Now it's time to present it. Type it out. Print it. Read over it. Step away. Come back to it. Do all of those things. Allow some trusted eyes to look at it as well. Go through a mock-up. Practice it. So when you are called, when the invitation comes, you're not scrambling. You already have a formula. You already have some things in the back burner. You're ready. But do not get dressed in public. And another thing, don't get dressed in front of everybody. Getting dressed is a private thing. I hope that what we've shared with you has been food unto your soul and a light unto your path. You can always follow us via Facebook. The Facebook page is The Balance of Life. Also, you can find me on Twitter as L.A. Fergie and on Instagram, A.L.A. Ferguson. If you are interested in receiving a free
free copy of our magazine, we can email you a digital copy of our June issue. Just email us today at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. Be on the lookout for the seminar, The Formula for Development. We're going to do part one and part two, the three C's and the three P's. We're going to go all the way in, do some dynamic teaching and coaching, and you can receive all of the details of this information. I love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of you. Have a blessed day, everyone, and we are signing off.